Hi, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Norman Perello and I'm from Woodskills and I, I've written a few books uh, in the past few years. My most recent book is A Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World and the original book is the From High Tech to Low Tech, A Woodworker's Journey which chronicles my journey from uh, my former high tech career to my current furniture making career. I also offer woodworking courses. I offer a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and design and making uh, afterwards all available at woodskills.com and the books are available in print and digital format. Hi, today I'd like to talk about the, the subject of knife hinges and uh, how I apply them in my furniture making. There is a considerable mystique or mystery around the application of knife hinges and how they, uh, how they perform, perform better both functionally and aesthetically better than a, a simple bud hinge. As far as uh, appearances go, or the aesthetic of a furniture piece, the knife hinges provide a more minimalist aesthetic. They're, they're concealed. They're at the top and the bottom as opposed to a butt hinge, which is on the sides, and they're more, much more visible. They uh, provide a more high-end and elegant look to a furniture piece. Now, I, uh, I've been using knife hinges in my work for my furniture, making my cabinets on stand for uh, over 20 years now and I use them exclusively. I think my very, very early cabinets prior to that period had the conventional bud hinges, but I progressed to, uh, to knife hinges once I've uh, started embracing James Cranoff's uh, techniques and philosophy of woodworking, and he used, ex he used uh, knife hinges exclusively in his work, so I was uh, sort of programmed to use knife hinges, but I, I do appreciate their, uh, their beauty and how they, uh, they're, because they're concealed, they, the actual door itself, the figure on the door is, is, uh, is visible in full and not concealed. The only visible part, one, once the door is installed, for example in a straight knife hinge, the only visible part is the uh, is a pin, a protruding pin, and even then the hinges themselves are very, uh, very nice to look at. They're, uh, and for the most part, they're machine brass, the higher quality ones. They're not stamped metal, although stamped metal ones are, are available, but I tend to use some machine brass ones. And this is a, an example of a, a straight knife hinge that I use. I almost, I've almost standardized this size to my work. So these uh, consist of two leaves. The one leaf has a pin in it, and this would reside in the top and the bottom portions of the cabinet, the top and bottom panel, and this would reside in the actual door. The, the pin itself is steel. This rotates around. So it provides, uh, in this case, with straight hinges, they're really designed for overlay doors. And I'll give an example of that. Well, this is an example of a cabinet, one of my very small, smallest cabinets possibly, with overlay doors using uh, knife hinges. So you can see the knife hinges, and I'll blow that up. And you can see the straight knife hinges with the uh, pin portion in the the bottom and top panels and they're concealed so you actually you see the, the door in full now if this were, for example if this were a figured door the uh, hinge would not mask any portion of the door which is excellent both on the sides and the front and this is why i've chosen to use knife hinges and most studio furniture makers i find use knife hinges in their uh, in their cabinets now you could this is an overlay door, but in the case of an inset door, there's a different type of uh, knife hinge, and it's called an L hinge or an offset hinge. This is a door from uh, from an inset cabinet, and you notice the uh, it's an L hinge. The actual the door itself is flush with the uh, with the surrounding frame, and this provides the offset provides the, uh, the method for the door to open easily. So this is one of the few cabinets I've created with with an offset. I probably created maybe a handful of cabinets with the offset hinge. It's a little more difficult to install. There are two uh, mortises you need to create and a little more adjusting. Here's a separate uh, door door panel from a, from another cabinet and I'll just show you how the... Uh, this, this would be a leaf from a knife hinge and this would actually slide in a mortise. The mortise in my case are, are I create by hand, although you can use a router in that process. Much quicker for me to create it by hand with a set of chisels and uh, a good marking knife. So that slides in. You have to practice a little with knife hinges to develop a, a system. Marking is, uh, is the most important component of installing knife hinges. The mortises need to be uh, uh, coat planar with each other. 
uh, both the door and the bottom and top panels so the door is not offset in any way. The, uh, the mortises need to be of the right uh, width and length for the corresponding uh, knife hinge. Now in this case the knife hinges I use are, uh, I've standardized them to about an inch and three sixteenths in length and about uh, five sixteenths long. They're Brusso hinges. They're more high-end hinges. It's a machine brass and this is what I tend to use in my work. They do tarnish over time and you can polish them. And uh, so that's an example. So what I'll do is I'll remove this uh, the cabinet's detached from all my stands and all my work, so this is my small my smallest piece. So what I'll do is I'll remove it from the stand and sh show a little more uh, detail. I also use uh, bullet catches to actually stop the door and keep it locked in. And most of my furniture pieces, there's different methods of doing this, but I prefer bullet catches. So you can use knife hinges for either overlay or inset doors. It's a vast improvement over uh, simple butt hinges, although there are higher quality butt hinges that are very uh, sophisticated looking and are machine brass also from the same company. And uh, Veritas also has some, uh, some good hinges. One of the advantages of uh, knife hinges over butt hinges is that the, uh, the shear strength is much improved on a knife hinge. It would need to, you would need to separate, the screw would need to separate from the door for it to shear off much improvement over a simple butt hinge where the butt hinge actually screws into the door itself at some point and then along the side top and bottom so it's easier it's easier for the door to sag and, and shear but these doors never sag it's almost impossible to rip them off mostly because the the leaves are inset into a uh, in a, a mortise so again it's very strong knife hinges are very strong due to their orientation and the screws would need to shear and they resist, they're very resistant to sagging. And also another advantage that I point out to many people is that you can use thinner doors. Now this is probably a standard size from one of my doors. I think it's a little over a half inch. Five eighths. Now the advantage to uh, the knife hinge is that you can actually use a thinner door because the, uh, the hinge itself is attaching through the, uh, through the top and the bottom. So it's not really critical for a uh, for the door to be thick because the length of the screw is in, within the top and the bottom of the, the door panel itself. Now on a butt hinge you would actually have to uh, screw the, uh, the hinge into the door so you need a minimal thickness depending on the size of the hinge and don't forget the butt hinge is also mortised into the door for the most for, for for higher quality furniture so you're losing some of that thickness so you have to compensate for that with a thicker door then again so that's another huge advantage to uh, knife hinges another advantage is a consistent reveal around the door is possible with knife hinges so because they're uh, unobtrusive and concealed you see the whole complete door you don't actually see any part of the hinge aside from the uh, the pins the leaves are mortised flush to the uh, both the cabinet uh, top and bottom panels and to the uh, the door the doors themselves. So this is flush. So it needs to be chiseled out, mortised out by hand, or using a router. But because because it's such a small mortise, I tend to just do it by hand. It's much faster than setting up a router and. I've slowly moved away from routers, and I point that out in one of my books, uh, Quiet Woodworking. In an unquiet world, I talk about my, uh, my movement away from using machines and power tools to hand tools exclusively in my work now. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll describe a, a few steps involved in, uh, in creating the mortise and fitting the actual hinge within the mortise. This will uh, reinforce whatever, what I've been saying about knife hinges and uh, the steps involved in actually installing a knife hinge. Again, the marking of the knife hinge is the most critical part and it's very critical to, uh, to mark it correctly, to mark the, uh, the actual outline of the uh, mortise and both the door and the cabinet tops and bottoms panels. And there is some adjustment if the doors don't quite meet in the middle. And this is a critical part here where they meet. What I'll do is I'll separate this and I'll uh, I'll place it here so I can show you the... This is a more detailed look of the, uh, the actual cabinet. This is, like I said, one of my smallest cabinets. And this is the doors with an overlapping uh, portion here. 
not to notice the actual uh, opening of the door. And this is the, uh, the actual hinge. You can see how concealed they are. So most people are not familiar with uh, or have never seen knife hinges in a cabinet before. So it's a nice touch on the, uh, a nice feature you can provide in your own furniture making to raise the level of your, uh, raise the quality and the, uh, the cachet of your, uh, of your work over a competitor's work. So, so that's why I've selected uh, knife hinges exclusively in my work over the past 20 years. And I've, uh, I've created countless cabinets on stand. I can't even remember how many I've created. Most on commission and spec based and I still to this day create quite a few every year. I'm almost uh, <laughs> typecast as a cabinet of stand creator. So I perfected my, uh, my installation techniques for the, uh, for the knife hinges in the, uh, and I typically have overlay doors just to simplify things. And I like the fact that I can have a larger expanse of door. I have created cabinets with inset doors and you use the L hinges, maybe a, a half dozen or so over the years, but I much prefer this style and uh, it's much easier to adjust. I tend to use again these uh, more solid machine uh, Brusso hinges. They're uh, actually gone up quite considerably in price over the last few years, but they're still worth it. I mean, you make a piece of furniture like this, you do it once and you do it correctly, and you always install the best, the best quality hardware when you're. So I don't have much more to add, aside from, uh, I do cover a lot of this in my, uh, my books, the steps, and my woodworking courses at woodskills.com. And that's almost everything I have to say about knife hinges, but I'll, uh, I will show a few steps involved in, uh, in carving out or uh, hogging out the waste from a, delineating a mortise, removing the waste from the mortise and fitting the, uh, the actual leaf of a, a knife hinge in. And the needs to the process because the uh, again the mortises need to uh, to line up correctly or they're called planar from the top and the bottom panels to the actual mortise within the, uh, the door itself. So this has to be now. I do I do leave a gap, a small gap from the uh, from the door to the actual side of the cabinet, the case side that keeps the door from. Uh, from touching the, uh, the case side, that's, uh, that's critical. I use a small spacer for that and I might show an example of that too in, the, in my steps. My, again, I use a small bullet catch to actually lock the doors in. And I only have a bullet catch on one side and my doors are oriented uh, to open from the right because most people are right-handed. This is the, uh, the approach I've always used, although I'm left-handed. And most people are right-handed, so they just assume that the, uh, the right-hand door is the, uh, the door to open. Now, to actually simplify that, I've also removed one of the poles from uh, the, the cabinet. Most of my most recent cabinets, I only have the one pole, so it's, it's uh, foolproof. They, the client would need to, uh, if they're not familiar with the cabinet, they would need to open the, uh, the cabinet from the right-hand door. And then the left door, it's, out, it's obvious there's a lip a lip and a rabbit that have joined together and this conceals the, uh, the opening. So that's a nice touch. It's an extra step, a little more complex sometimes, especially if you're using figured wood and matching the woods and creating the uh, lip and the overlay correctly. But I do outline all this in my, uh, one of my courses or two of my courses and the book, one of my books. So thank you for watching and I hope I've, uh, I've inspired you to use knife hinges in your own uh, furniture making and, and uh, to discuss some of the techniques I use on my own uh, when I apply knife hinges in my own work. So thank you for watching and 